Thank you very much. I'm going to try and cover a large topic in a short period of time and uh, maybe generate a little controversy. I have no disclosures other than the fact that I am a surgeon. So in looking at um, whether or not we should credential vascular access, I think we need to ask some basic questions. Uh, who, what, why, how, can we, should we? And as organized medical staffs, we are tasked with providing credentialing and quality with our governing board approval. So the answer to the first question is yes, we can. But should we do this? Uh, what would be the rationale? Who should we credential? What criteria are used uh, for credentialing and recredentialing? Well, why should we? Well, we know dialysis access is created and maintained <clears throat> by a variety of specialists. And I think common criteria are needed. Whether or not you're a surgeon interventionalist, if you're doing the same type of procedure, you should have expect the same results, same uh, guidelines. Uh, these specific criteria can improve outcomes and hopefully decrease costs. And I think we've seen that uh, somewhat with the uh, uh, fistula first DOGI uh, guidelines. They also, if we had developed the more specific criteria, we will have a nice uh, framework uh, to uh, do peer review and aid with recredentialing. Specifically, not to pick on any one group, but uh, these are examples I've seen. Uh, why should we cred uh, credential vascular access? Well, you know, should a, a surgeon who hasn't seen an access case since years ago in residency be credentialed just because he has time on his schedule? Or should a physician who is frustrated by lack of support say, well, I'll just do it? Um, should he be credentialed? Should someone with limited technical skill for all of the requirements needed to achieve vascular access uh, do the, these procedures? Uh, or should someone who has some of the skills but is not knowledgeable about the end-stage renal patient uh, get credentialed? So with that in mind, I'll give my thoughts in general I think if someone is dedicated enough to develop the technical and cognitive skills specific to vascular access, they should be, and we'll go into some details in a bit. As with all credentialing, this will be a summation of their education, training experience, and current competence. I think we, going forward, to aid with peer review and recredentialing, will need to develop some uh, objective and prospective quality outcomes. So looking at what criteria do we, should we have for the tra 